And ladies and gentlemen, welcome back here to HBL Day 2, Week 2 festivities. Um, Blame Game up against Team Tempest is going to be up next. So again, today's match is a little bit a little wonky, but next match is totally correct. Blame Game and Tempest. Game number one, though, that we did see uh, was actually really fun. I Again, I, I'm a big fan of Sergeant mm -hmm. Hammer. You don't really see her a lot in the NA. That was, of course, an EU game. And uh, the the draft meta from each region is just slightly different. I liked it, though. I liked it. It worked yeah. out well. It was definitely fun to watch. I really enjoyed that last game. That was awesome. To see see Hammer do so well, I'm very happy. So game number, well, technically three, but game number two of today. Again, Blame Game and Tempest. Now, ESV Tempest is definitely a name that I recognize. Do you recognize anyone here from Blame Game? Did you just catch last week's? I, I, I did see the one game. I'm not... I don't recognize a lot of them. I do know Fetus in a Tube. That's a name you don't forget. I mean, <laughs> definitely not a name that would be forgotten if you hear it. So he messaged I, me yesterday. He's like, are you going to have a trouble saying my name, Fetus in a Tube? And he's like, well, I'm a guy that's done games with a guy named Captain Boner. So, I mean, <laughs> so I don't think Fetus, fetus in a Tube. In a tube. That, yeah. That's Pretty child's tame. play, sir. I'm, I'm fine. <laughs> ready for this. <laughs> Turtle Tosser as well. Echo. and uh, How do you pronounce that one? I have such a hard time. Sp uh, Spurperber? Spur yeah, I'm not even going to touch it if you can't. <laughs> yeah, spur. I'm going to call him Spur. Spur Perber. All right, fair enough. So, it'll be fine. Uh, jumping into the game, it will be Cursed uh, Hollow. Of course, the teams don't know that. So, I, you know, again, I'm not really too familiar with uh, a lot of the, the meta here for most of these guys. I mean, yesterday was fairly, with the exception of the one game, is all fairly natural kind of stuff. This, I'm just going to say, it's, it's, we're probably going to see a lot of repeat heroes here. Yeah, it'll be exciting. All right, so would you like me to give you the countdown for our draft mode here? Yes, sir. Let's get it going. All right, and in three, two, one, go. All right, and here they come. The picks, the bands, the team lineups. I'm excited. I like the name Turtle Tosser. I don't know why. Me too. Reminds me of, like, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, though. Like, they're just tossing people. That and a combination of, I also think of Lord of the Rings, dwarf tossing. Toss me. Okay. That is what. That's nothing that really came to my mind, but uh, you know, who knows what the, the name, the story behind that name is. Uh, that for the like bands, yeah, for the bands, we got Stitches and Arthas, and look at that, a Tychus again. First pick, yeah, first band material. You can't go wrong with the Tychus, man. Yeah, can't go wrong. He's just he's so strong. The damage is coming out of him is great. And then Odin, you sit there, you're like, I want this damage to go away. Oh, you're gonna Odin. All right, I guess I'm not gonna get this damage to go away. This is just gonna be really painful for me. It's just a great pickup overall. I love it. So taking out the stitches from the situation, I mean, we did see the stitches ban a few times here in uh, day one, week two, day one. And uh, I mean, you're probably going to continue seeing the stitches bans every now and then because that pick potential is just sometimes way too scary, especially on uh, certain maps. It's very strong. A lot of places that you can actually trap them into trees. Uh, so I do like that band. You see the pickups here. Toe Jam and Earl and crew are going to be taking the Zeratul Vala. Mm-hmm. Lots of damage coming out of there. Also, a lot of ability to keep people where they want them to with the Void Prison in any way. If you totally deny some escapes. People get in there. They can position really well. And then Vala can follow up great with her strafe if she chooses to use that, take that too. But I've seen Rain, been seeing a little bit of Rain of Vengeance come into play a lot now too, so... Who knows? And well, sometimes it's just too dicey to get off those strafes. I mean, there's a lot yeah. of tools to get into the back line to catch someone, and you know, taking out a strafe out of the equation, like sometimes it's just too risky. I mean, the on-demand stun can be extremely nice in some situations, and uh, so going for that, and of course, just her flat-out attack speed is just amazing. Oh, oh, unbelievable! Yeah. Mm -hmm. Looks like the Diablo pick up there by Fetus in a tube, and then a Tassadar pick up by Echo as well for Blame Game. It looks pretty. I. It seems pretty standard to me. Diablo is not a bad, not a bad tank, and picking up Tassadar is always good. Getting the support and the damage. Tassadar is just one of those heroes that I feel like fills so many roles and does he it does. so well. Yeah, and he is so versatile. So seeing him picked up on any team is, I'm just like, yeah, that was a good pick. That's gonna work well with whatever they decide to do here. I mean, he does some pretty good wave clear. At the same time, he also gives your team a lot of shields. That's a lot of survivability. And then a level 10 becomes an Archon because, let's just face it, nobody takes Force Gate anymore. Um, it's been a Coon's Edge since I've actually seen a Force Gate in a competitive match. But at the same time, I wouldn't be too surprised to see an answer of Uther here because Uther, again, can fill a lot of roles. He's not only your tank, but he's also your support. And then he's a ghost. So um, <laughs> hard to deal with sometimes. Hard to deal with. 
And I think, you know, we'll definitely be seeing a lot of attack damage coming out of the Tassadar and the Tychus together. It looks like Rhaegar going to be picked up. That would have been... That, I think that would have been pretty powerful if Blame Game had picked up the, the Rhaegar as well with the Tychus and the and the Tassadar on Blame Game. But it looks like they'll be picking that up along with Chen as well, too, for Team Tempest. Chen, again, uh, you know, making big waves here into the competitive scene. So we had Chen come in this month. Next month, we're also going to have Asmodan and... Um, Who's the other one? Anu Barak. Anu Barak. I had always forgotten him. So I'm very curious, you know, going forward, will they have such an impact like we've been seeing Chen here in a lot of these games? But Chen as a tank again, if he can get into that back lane, we actually saw Storm, Earth, and Fire there in game number one uh, that, yeah, that we was just great. did play out. So uh, he more of a damaging Chen uh, rather than that control with the barrel. We'll have to see which one he wants to swap here because, again, you really want to be protecting that valley if you are going to be going strafe. But even mm -hmm. then, like you do have to be also protecting that Zeratul because, you know, if you get if he just dies out of the fight, you know, typically you're going to see the Void Prison. And you mm -hmm. need to and keep Spur that up. Perver picking up the t the Tyrael, and then Narthir is going to be taking the Uther as well for them on Team Blame Game. It's looking pretty powerful here. Uh, Spur Perver is going to be able to jump right through there with Judgment and take out uh, take out um, Vala as easily as he needs to, which is going to be. Pretty pretty scary for Tempest if they're not able to deal with that properly. I was really expecting the, the Uther to come here for ESV Tempest because of mm -hmm. the control that he can also bring with those stuns of the Divine Storm and vulnerability if you need to. I mean, why not? Throw the vulnerability on the Strafe. Strafe can't be interrupted anymore. GG. Yeah. This, however, it looks like a scary comp from Blame Game. Yeah. This, I, you know what would be exciting? I would love to see that if the... If uh, Narthir took his invulnerability and then just dropped it on top of the Tyrael, and then Tyrael is just sitting there making everybody else invulnerable, and then we should <laughs> Team of damage. <laughs> Team invulnerable. Team, I am going to destroy everything <laughs> you love, but I'm also not going to get touched. That, that would be that would be sweet. That is something I didn't actually think about, but now that you're bringing it up, that would be an interesting gimmick comp. I don't think we're going to see that here, but... Uh, that, that's something to put in the notebook I, a, boy there. Dream, a boy can dream. A boy can dream. Just like Rainer will be being picked up for Tempest as the final pickup. What do you think of that that choice there, Jester? It's team damage up against Ten team seconds. beef. <laughs> that's what this is. Team damage versus team beefcake. Uh, I mean, zero to a Vala Raider, and then, I mean, even if you're going to go with the split here for Chen, I, I just really... I'm predicting a bloodlust out of this because they just have so much damage on the table. If they can chew through some of that beef, I mean, they're going to come out flying. But if they can't yeah. take down anyone, oh, they're going to be in pain. If Tyrael's able to pick, if Tyrael picks up that judgment and he pushes right through there, he's going to be able to stop a lot of that coming through, though, too. So they're definitely going to need to be careful of that and be able to know when to engage at the right moment so that they don't get their what they're looking to do, potentially. We don't know, but what they're looking to do picked off really quickly here. So without further ado, I am at seven seconds. Are you at seven seconds, my friend? Are you ready we to go? Are. Yeah, we're going to get this game rolling, guys. ESV Tempest up against the blame game on Cursed Hollow after you, sir. All right, sir, on a go. Three, two, one, and go. All right, and it looks like over here we will be having Nightmare on Chen, Pelion on Raynor, Treble on Rhaegar, Toejam and Earl on Zeratul, Pithix on Vala, and who do we have over there on Team Blame Game? On Team Blame Game, spur -er, er is apparently uh, the correct way to say this, and that is the only way that we're going to be saying that. It's going to be on the Tyrio Echo on... The Tassadar, we got Fetus in a tube being played out by the Diablo. Turtle Tosser on the only damage of their team, which is that Tychus. And, of course, uh, Norther on the Uther. So, Cursed Hollow, big map, looking for the tributes for those curses. So we could actually see some extended team fights. Again, big, beefy team here from Team Blame Game. So they could actually really prolong a lot of these fights if they get some Merc camps uh, to be pushing in other lanes. This actually goes into their favor to extend. Mm-hmm. And it looks like they'll be setting up. Chen is just going to be chilling here, heading towards top lane now with Zeratul following him as well. And it looks like we'll be having Vala sitting here in mid lane against the Tassadar. Tassadar, a great pick for solo laning. He is probably one of the strongest solo laners in the game right now. And it looks like we'll have Turtle Tosser and Narthir in bottom lane against Pelion as Raynor. And we'll be having Treble, Toejam and Earl and Nightmare just kind of poking around a little bit on top. But it looks like they'll be leaving Treble here in top lane on his own, and they'll be dropping down into mid lane to help de help this Vala as well. Pithix just chilling on his own, doing a little couple barrel rolls there. Just barrel rolling it up. <laughs> barrel, we have a false dad, do we? <laughs> <laughs> barrel you know, he tries to do it. He, he wants to do a barrel roll. Who doesn't want to do a barrel roll? 
Uh, good old Star Fox days with arrow rolls, but uh, yeah, not today. So it might be a little bit counterintuitive for some people just getting into the, the the game to actually be putting supports into lanes by themselves, but they are incredibly durable here in early games. I mean, look at this. Echo is just dueling out Pithex, basically comes out even on the trade, even though he's technically labeled as an assassin. Same here, idea here with the Regar up top. He's not really going to be able... He's not going to win the lane, but good luck. But he'll be able to hold it. Yeah, exactly. And you don't have to worry about him potentially going down to that. It looks like Toe Jam and Earl and Nightmare picking up that relatively early uh, Siege Giant camp in top lane, which will help them be pushing in the top lane, which is right now just Treble by himself doing as much as he can. And in bottom lane, it looks like Narthir and Turtle Tosser just pushing in as much as they can on Peth uh, Helion, who's just defending as much as he can, and Rainer is usually pretty good on his own in that lane. And I don't know, I, I think we'll probably see some sort of counter here from from uh, Team Blame Game picking up a camp of their own to try to push down in their own lanes. Yeah, you can uh, see Tychus, Turtle Tosser, actually going to be going off and starting that mm -hmm. up. So again, Merc pressure, timing it out here with objectives, especially if you can prolong it. I mean, those Mercs are just going to be able to do loads of damage yeah. unhindered in their various lanes because the first tribute now going to be coming up here down bottom. All right, it looks like they'll be making their way there. Uther just making, you know, making his statement known. He's sitting in this bush, just waiting here. First one down there, Pythic coming in. It looks like a storm will be going down on Pythic. Now he knows that the Tassadar knows he's there, and it looks like Nightmare going to be charging in there with Pelion right in the front, do, just getting ready to take this. Ta uh, Tyrael dropping down as much as he can, putting down the sword and the zone, and it looks like Nightmare will be jumping in there, Tojim and Nero putting down a lot of damage on Spurper. T Treble getting right up there in the front, Pythix trying to get, not really attacking anybody, just setting himself up in case he needs to start doing so, and just poking as much as they can here. Mm -hmm. Pythix getting himself out of that front lane, doesn't want to get shot in the face, Nightmare getting ready to try to take that tribute. Forcing Team Blame Game to do something about it. Fetus in a tube, pushing right up in the front there, taking out the little turn. Oh, and it looks like he'll be going in Fetus in a tube, jumping right in on Pythix. Needs to be careful. Spurper for getting himself up in the front lane, taking a lot of damage here. But they're going to have to jump back. Nightmare keeping up the aggression on top of Spurper, and down goes Diablo. Nightmare putting up the shields, jumping in on Narthir. Narthir goes down as well. Treble following them, keeping them out, and it looks like Pelion will be trying to get the pickup here. Treble needs to be careful, though. He doesn't want to get taken out as well. And it's a Good engagement here for DSV Tempest, picking up the tribute and a couple of kills. Yeah, low hit points across the board, no less than five heroes actually not looking that healthy. But again, Merc pressure in these other lanes have actually done wonderful amounts of work. The top lane, out of ammo, low hit points, did only have that one uh, giant because Diablo did come down late to the lane, but this bottom lane as well. Again, no ammo, no gate on this one. So a little bit of an extended, but only the kills going the way here of ESP Tempest. So the, you know they do get that slight advantage. Level six a piece, but again, mm -hmm. team beef here on blame game. They can just prolong team those beef, fights dude. so long. Just keeping themselves in as long as they need to, just continuing to poke. And I think that that's could, again, as we go later into the game, it'd be really powerful for them for picking up those tributes because they can just continue to whittle away at team uh, at ESV Tempest and just stand there and wait. And once they find their opening, they'll just take those tributes. But the first tribute going the way of Tempest, so we'll see what happens. Now, uh, you know, everyone's back and soaking into their lanes. Looks like a bit of a gang on bottom because Turtle Tosser could not deal with that level of damage. Four on one for him. He's going to be dead for 10 seconds, but I'm not too sure that's actually going to hurt the ability here of mm. Blame Game to actually get up to and contest this tribute. Looks like they'll be making their way towards the top to get that next tribute that's up there. Diablo and Rhaegar already there, duking it out in lane as Toe Jam and Earl jumps in here to try to take this... Try to take the tribute, but he's not going to be able to do it. Echo seeing him very quickly dropping this, dropping down the storm, and looks like Fetus will be jumping right in there to do as much damage as he can and keep them on their toes. Just tanking right through the damage that's coming out out here from ESV Tempest. Fetus just zoning as much as he can, keeping them out here. Narthir following that up as well. Nightmare just slapping Narthir as much as he can. And they're just waiting. Looks like Toji Mineral waiting up here at the top to just for his moment to jump in. Echo just going to stand here and start trying to take this tribute. Fetus in the tubes, flipping that over. Looks like he's going to try to get him to do something. Fetus into taking a lot of damage. He needs to be careful right in front of Nightmare. Nightmare's going to jump into the perfect time. Toe Minero getting in as much damage as he can. Echo trying to get away. Toe Minero getting in a lot of good cleave. And he goes down. And they're going to make their way out. ESV Tempest picking it up again. They're just going back and forth, Jester. They're, you know, they're, they're waiting. They're, it looks like Team Blame Game is trying to find that point where they can just push them and force them out and make them try to blow, th blow what they need to use on ESV Tempest. And... Tempest is just waiting it out and engaging exactly when they need to and picking up the tributes. And it looks like they'll be picking up this golem as well to push in top lane. Yeah, the chain heals actually come out really nicely there for Treble. And the golem contest is going to be off to a start. 
Oh, Spurberger is going to go down very quickly, but he's got that blow up. He might be able to do a little bit of damage here. Almost getting Toe Gemineral, but Turbo Gemineral is going to keep himself out there. Venus in a tube jumping in there to pick that up, and that will go the way of Team Blame Game. Picking up that golem, stopping Team Tempest from taking it themselves. And that was, that was, a, good, that was a good stop from them. Team Blame Game just had way too many hit points to deal with. I mean, at the same yeah. time, the, as I said, the Chain Heal is doing great work oh, here. Oh, and the Tempest, flip on so. Toad Gem and Earl from Fetus in a Tube almost gets him, but he's going to blink back out over the wall. That was close. That was very close for him. But they will push right down this wall, Team T Team Blame Game just getting right in there, doing as much damage as they can. They're so tanky. They don't even care. They're just, look at me, Fortress. I don't even care. I'm just going to push right in here. I don't care what damage you guys are going to put out. We're just going to keep pushing. Yeah, Blame Game is supporting their golem as best they can. It's a really good move for the, the pressure here of this lane. I don't think they're going to quite get that keep unless they can finally kill off a few members here of Tempest. Mm. But that Zeratul has been sticking around a long time. Yeah, he just keeps himself right in the fight. Toe and Earl not afraid of anything, just continues to push. Oh, 10. So, uh, and they are now at level 10. Those ulties do go down for ESV Tempest. And I, you know, they, I think Blame Game knows they got to back off a little bit here for a little while. They're not and tense, they can't fight, and there's a tribute. That is not good for them. Yep, they need to be careful. And if this tribute is picked up, ESV Tempest will be getting the curse down on them, but it looks like they're going to just zone them out. They're going to be backing off completely, letting them pick up this tribute. And that tribute's going to go the way of Blame Game. Well, it's only the first tribute there for Blame Game. They are sitting now still at 2-1. Again, I just don't think maybe they ha didn't have the mana, they didn't have the hit points. Zeratul immediately making you know, a break back to his fountain treble. Yeah, he's just a little bit under half mana there as well. So they didn't think that they had the longevity for it. They gave it up. They're not going to lose anything for it. They just don't gain that curse immediately. You can see they also transition straight to the next mercs because, again, we've had these prolonged fights, but no merc pressure in the other lanes. The other lanes have actually been very stagnant. You can see that all the forts are still up on the board uh, mm -hmm. as well. So... They want to. They want to get something for it. They want to get something for it, and uh, yeah, want to make something happen here. Whatever they can. Looks like ESV Tempest will be going in on this golem, picking up the golem on their side as well to counter. Try to do as much as they can here as the next tribute goes down. If that golem's pushing in as that tribute goes down, and they're able to pick that up, that could be a lot of damage coming in from ESV Tempest here on Team Blame Game. RNG going with the favor of here of Tempest because if they can get this. They're going to be able to, you know, capitalize not only in the mid there with those knights. Actually, the knights are RNG fighting off each God. other. But... The RNG gods are smiling upon them, and it looks like Nightmare going to just jump his way right in there. Diablo doing him a favor and flipping him right out there. Barrel's going to go down. Down comes a straight from Vala. Fetus in a two take a lot of damage. Just be careful. Down goes the Bloodless as well. Toe Chamberlain getting in there to do tons of damage. Pithic's doing tons of damage. Down goes Diablo. Spurper in a bad spot here. Needs to be careful. Down he goes. Narthir taking a lot of damage, trying to heal up as much as he can. There's getting zoned out by the Tyrael. Down goes Pithix. Looks like there will be the Odin as well from Turtle Tosser. Treble trying to do as much as he can here, but he's going to go down as well. And Narthir cleaning up here with Turtle Tosser and Echo. And this is looking a little evil he even here. And Rainer goes down as well to the continued damage from Turtle Tosser. And Nightmare got to make his way out here. That was that turned out really well for Team Blame Game. It turned out really well for them in the end. The beef. The beef is real. The beef is real. They just stick through it, and then they do the damage they need to do in the end. And that is going to get them that next tribute, so they will not have to worry about tremendous amounts of push coming out of that golem. Yeah, in fact, the golem does not even stand anymore. It is totally no, dead in the down. water. In fact, it's now Merc pressure going the way of Team Blame Game. So they've equalized out the tributes. It's 2-2. Mid being pushed in by the Knights. Bottom being pushed in here by the Giants. And top, well, there's nothing really left to, to grab top. Overall, bad news all around here for ESV Tempest because they had mm. such a nice early game lead with those 2-0, oh, but yeah. their damage is starting to fall off or you know, there's just not enough focus mm. in order to bring down one of these beefier opponents. And it's it's funny too because they do have that extra, uh, you know, beefy is one thing, but they also have that extra damage coming out of Echo and Turtle Tosser, who both are beefy for in and of themselves, and this is just going to, they're going to be able to hold fast through any damage that's coming out of ESV Tempest, and then they just push right on through with the damage that they have and the beefiness, as you said, that their team holds right now in the game. The ESV will hold all the lanes, all the mercs are now down for the count, at least... Uh... For now, as I said, I mean, there's a lot of damage going all throughout the different lanes, but at this point, Blame Game, they're just waiting for that next tribute because this is going to be the money tribute. This is going to be a curse no matter what, and it's going to be up to the damage comp of ESV to start focusing down and taking out some of the beef here from Blame Game, or, mm -hmm. it's, or they're just going to get outlasted. 
Blame game is just going to stand stand strong and wait and then push in when they, when they need to. Looks like they'll be jumping in here. Diablo trying to get in some damage. Phoenix in a two, pushing in on treble. Nightmare again in a bad spot, but down goes the Bloodlust from Rhaegar. He's going to be pushing as much again. Barrel goes down, but it's not going to do much of anything as down goes the Void Prison. And he's just rolling around here on top of the soda, not doing too much. Looks like Tyrael is going to go down. He's going to be trying to explode there, doing a little bit of damage to Phoenix in a two, but they're not able to burn through this. They're just staying strong. Team Blame game here. Phoenix in a two, dropping Narthir, staying right up in the front. Echo putting out some serious damage. Toe Jam and Earl making his way down here towards, to try to pick off somebody. Looks like he gets off on that ta turtle tosser, but he's not going to be able to do too much. And Team ESV, they're actually just kind of even for both teams. They're just continuing to battle away here as much as they can. Nightmare, oh, looks like he might get caught here, and he will. Nice little throw there from Toe Jam and Earl, picking him off really quickly. The damage coefficients have just kind of equalized again. I mean, the Odin, lots of damage. The Archon, lots of damage. Low hit points across the board. Fetus in the tube, however, does come back. And because he's huge and healthy at this point, they do secure the Cursed 14 blame game. Unfortunately, again, there's no Merc pressure to kind of be working on these mm -hmm. uh, keeps by themselves. You see already mid now getting cleaned up there by Tempest. Bottom, however, could be a big target because as well right now, we have a Golem being uh, attempted here by Blame yep. game. And it looks like they'll be using this time with the curse up to be taking this top golem. Maybe, what the, I don't know what the timer is down there, but no, it looks like the other golem is still going to be down for about a minute, but they'll be picking this up, maybe picking up some ca other camps as well. As they spawn, looks like these knights will be up in about five seconds. And they also have their sheet giants in bottom as well. Just, you know, doing what they can during this curse. It was nice for them to be able to pick that up and just out-sustain uh, ESV as much as they could during that team fight before at the tribute. So, yeah. I'm a little surprised that uh, we're not even going to get a keep out of this. Like, no forts, no keeps, no objectives, really. We're going to be coming down mm. in terms of kills here during this this curse. And the curse is typically the time that you want to start trying to push to that advantage. Yeah. Instead, you know, right now, Team Blame Game is just going to take the time that uh, Tempest is basically on the back foot, and they're just going to keep clearing out these Merc camps. I'm just going to keep clearing things up. It seems like they're using a more as a, just a, you know, a moment. And it looks like Spurperber is actually going to be jumping in here. Toe Jam and Earl going to try to pick up that night camp, but he's not going to be able to get it in time. And Tyrael will take him out, and they're just going to push right in here. Blame game picking up the night camp. That is terrible for them. They're now going to have this camp coming up, pushing in on already what is a tough, well-pushed in base on ESV Tempest. And that, he tried and tried in vain, but it was taken out too quickly. The Void Prism actually... Worked against him, not able to get any sort of help there from anyone on his team, and they just couldn't solidify it. And that's going to be really big for Team Blame Game. Well, Team Blame Game do finally solidify uh, a fort to their name. Bottom is looking like very low hanging fruit. It might actually be the big uh, objective after they go for this golem, but. Yeah, Zerto is still down for 10 seconds, and he does not have that Void Prism because he did use it to try to secure those Knights, and it's just unfortunate it did not go their way. Really good insight, mm -hmm. though, from Blame Game to kind of, again, be clearing out a lot of these, and, and you know, it's just a bonus kill right there. It went their way, and it's basically going to solidify the rest of this push. And they just have that strength. They feel pretty strong. They're going for this Golem, and it looks like Team Tempest is going to try to get in here as, as they're finishing off the Golem. Spurperver in a bad spot. He's taking a lot of damage here. Looks like he's going to be getting off a judgment, but it's not going to do too much. He will die. Pelion also taking a lot of damage, and the explosion will take out Pelion. Down goes the Reign of Vengeance from Pintix, but he's in a bad spot as well. And down goes ESV Tempest. Three people down for them. Rhaegar and Zeratul up, but they can't do too much to defend against this. And they're going to have that Golem pushing in in bottom lane now, too. This is looking really strong for Team Blame Game. So the panda jumped in. Chen was just like, all right, they're going to do this golem. We're going to contest it. He gets overpowered out of it. <laughs> he got overpowered out of it. Then we had the apocalypse come down. <laughs> instantly killed out two more team members there at VSP Tempest. Mm. And the control and the beef here is just so good for Blame Game. You know, I said it back at the draft. I am really scared of this comp because it's protect the Tychus who won't die because of Odin. You got two mm -hmm. ghosts on your team and so much control that you know you really have to be a surgical knife to get into here with your damage and it's just yeah. not happening here from Tempest. They're so far on the back foot. They're down in the levels, they're down in the kills. They're about to lose a the keep. They're trying to do as much as they can. Nightmare trying to push Narthier back just so they can get a kill off on him. They will be able to do so. But again, they got so much pushed in there that one kill isn't really gonna make up for that. And his spirit's just hacking away there. Uther does not go down easy. I mean, the Lich King could not stop his powerful spirit. He's just gonna keep bashing people as much as he can. As much as you can. You already see the rest of the team uh, here from Blame Game. Oh, okay, Tribute's up. We already know where you are. We're going to go grab it. So again, we're still sitting at two Tributes here for ESV Tempest. Mm -hmm. That's not a good feeling to be at. Just sitting there at the cusp of a curse. Having been so be close. Yeah, they can't do anything with it. 
And it looks like they'll be picking up that top siege giant camp, which will be pushing in for them a little bit, getting some counter push going on here as Team uh, Blame Game will be picking up their bottom siege giants as well. And that'll be pushing in that bottom lane, which is already pushed in so much at this point for them. And just continue to do as much as they can. It looks like ESV Tempest will be trying to push back here in the mid lane, taking out the wall, taking out a turret. And trying to put on some counter aggression here in this mid lane. It looks like Fetus in a tube will be jumping right in there, right in the front. Spurfiver has at half health right now, but still trying to push Tempest out of here. And they will be able to do that successfully. Tempest dropping back here. I think they're going to go to bottom lane and try to deal with those siege giants that are going to be pushing in for them. But down goes another tribute, and it looks like they'll be everyone will be making their way up top to try to deal with that. Well, the RNG is not in their favor anymore because Tempest really needed that into that bottom lane because they were all heading there. Right now, the position game is going to go the way of blame game. And... I don't know, man. I'm I'm very fearful for this fight because this could be a game-ending fight right here. It could. And it looks like Fetus in a tube getting himself right in there. Totem Mineral jumping right back in. Down the Void Prison. Down goes the Bloodlust from Rhaegar. Treble is going to try to get in there. Spurfiver is really low. He's going to Judgment in there. <laughs> Stun the Pythics. Not going to do too much. And it looks like he's just trying to zone people out right now. Fetus in a tube going to go down. Uh, Tyrael's will be down as well. Narthir taking a lot of damage. They need to be careful. That is actually going real. Narthir needs to be careful. Odin's down, but it's not going to be enough to do too much against ESV Tempest here, and they are able to, as you said, with a surgical knife, get in there and deal with who they need to deal with, keeping up two to one at the end tier, Nightmare, and Pelion picking that up, and down goes the curse for ESV Tempest. What is Uther doing? He needed to get down right there to Pelion, and he was just slamming on a Chan who had infinite shields at the time. Uh, Saw the first thing he could see and just started hitting him. <laughs> That's not what you're supposed to do with it, but... <laughs> Uh, I gotta give it to Zeratul right there. He initiated that, he had the Void Presence yeah. into the back, he got three of them out of the equation, and just before you know it, Tyrael, no hit points, barely was in that fight at all, he blew up, and that was basically his damage right there. He got the Judgment off, sure, but it just wasn't enough. Gotta really give it to the Tempest right there, because not only do they get those kills, they get the levels, we're 19 apiece now, and at the same time, they get finally get themselves that curse. They're taking forts left, right, and center, and they still got an abundance of time. They could uh, easily roam down to the bottom and get it. That is the wonderful part of Heroes of the Storm, though, too, is, as you can see even in this, that's just that one team fight. They got a really great engagement there, and Zeratul just did what he needed to do to take care of Team uh, Blame Game's incredible amount of strength that they've got going on, Team Beefcake, and they were able to solidify a great kill, which is now helping them push back against what has already been a really powerful game for Team Blame Game against, against Tempest. So if ESV Tempest can do this again, with, is this going to be 20? It is going to be 20 with this fort. So they have a huge advantage for this next upcoming team fight because there's nobody in lanes at all here. Uh, but as I said, that team blame game does get their 20 themselves. So not mm -hmm. exactly going to be that big advantage I was hoping for. But 20 apiece, we do got the Storm Talents in this next team fight. Like well, Nightmare looks like he's making his way in here. He wants to deal with this, and he's going to be barreling right in there. Totem and all coming up behind him. Bloodless goes down. Let's get in there. Void Prison goes down. Phoenix in a tube getting caught out right in the front. Now, not able to get any sort of support there, and down he will go. Another huge stun coming from Uther on top of this zone, and it looks like Narthir is going to be taking a lot of damage. Burpover up there trying to deal with Helion, he's not going to be able to do much. Down goes one, down goes two. Turtle Toss, they're going to be left here alone with Burpover, and the, I don't know if they're going to be able to deal with this. Oh, and it looks like they will pick it up, and a nice stun goes down for them, and they're able to turn it around on ESP Tempest who try to come in and stop them, but the Golem playing the sixth character here in, in Heroes of the Storm Getting down a nice stun that helped them just push them down. Big now. power of that level 20 Odin, man. That, that was at least two nukes. And the first one blew up the Zeratul, the second one they're cleaning up the rest. And again, you know, mm -hmm. Tyrael doing some amazing work uh, with his judgment. I mean, he was into that back line. He was on that valley. He was on that Rainer. He was making sure that they were not able to get off their combos. And Turtle Tosser, again, double hit points. The Apocalypse came out huge there as well. And it was so close for Tempest. So close. But once they got that Golem, it was just... So okay, close, but yet so far. Yeah. They were, they just, they wanted it, and they almost got it. And it looks like they'll be pushing in again. This top lane, the game swinging in the other direction once again. Looks like level 21 will be picked up for uh, Team Blame Game as, you know, again, they're just going to continue leveling through here. And that Golem is just going to be pushing down those towers, going right for that core. He's got Bloodlust in his eyes, ready to take that core down. And it looks like they, it looks like both teams will just be going out here, either getting ready for another set of another set of tributes or probably just picking up as many camps as they can there's a lot of camps up right now on the map well i believe we have at least one tribute under the hood here for blame game if not two so the next tribute actually could be a really big deal if it is two unfortunately we don't actually have the markers but i know they have at least one tribute's now going to be coming down and which i'll have caught up spurberver is going to be jumping right in there and him he's going to blink out trying to save himself looks like nightmare will jump right in trying to do some damage 
zoning people out with his barrel, but looks like Tyrael will go down to a large amount of damage. He's going to try to get himself in there. Tyke, uh, looks like Uther will be dropping his ulti, and a, and a uh, shot from the nuke will be going down. A lot of damage coming out of that. A lot of damage coming out of Odin, and they're just going to push them right out of here. Again, Team Blame Game just taking a position, He's saying what they want to do, and taking it, and not letting ASV Tempest get in there to, do, to take it away from them. That's what good teams do, man. They force the opponents to react about against them, and taking mm -hmm. the win here could actually be really big for them. 22 to 21, they're going to get this goal on. That tribute is still sitting there, and uh, this game has actually gone on much longer than I would have actually given it back at the draft yeah. team. They just, you know, both teams have been making really great plays. We saw that really awesome play come out of Zeratul at that one point, and we've just been seeing yeah. team, uh, team Blame Game just tanking through a lot of this and knowing when to engage and who to engage on at the right time, and it's been really solid coming from them. Nightmare going to try to push back as much as he can here, but jumping in, jumping around as a panda as a panda would do. He's not able to do too much. He's going to have to jump out of here and feed us into tubes. Burr, burr, burr. Turtle Tosser and Echo will just continue to bash on this core, and down it goes. The GG game going to blame Team Blame Game. That was a fun match to watch there, Jester. I really enjoyed that. Pew, pew, and down it goes. I mean, again, a lot of the DPS here from ESV with Tempest, they had some really great moments. The Zerato set up some really great picks, and then you time that out with the Bloodlust, and you just go to town on them. But so many times, it just did not work out for them. And I got to feel for them a little bit. But that draft was so good, I feel, from Blame Game. Mm -hmm. Ooh. That was, I mean, a blame game, just, they came out with such strength there, too. And you kept saying it, Jester, at the beginning. Just, they, just Team Beef. They just, they were on top of it, and they just, de they dealt with whatever damage that was coming out of Team ESV Tempest. And then they just pushed right through, right after everything had come down from ESV Tempest. And they, they made it work, and they did the damage they needed to do to the right people. But, you know, Zeratul actually getting off a really great Void Prism there at that one point on that one uh, tribute, and that actually helped them solidify a tribute for Team Tempest, and they pushed back and did did what they could to swing the game in their favor, but unfortunately they couldn't swing it back enough, and it just looked like it went the way of Team Blame Game. Yeah, those late game picks. I mean, Zeratul at the end there basically just got blown up way too quickly, and yep. that's not what you need. Not what you need. A 5v4 after level 20 is not what you need whatsoever. Yep. So congratulations to the Blame Game. They will put some points on the board. And we're going to set up for our game at number three here in week two, day two. It will be Team Prism up against I2 Hard. They're going to be going head to head here when we return. So, guys, you are watching the Heroes Premier League here with Forco Jester and Xander the Gamer. We will be right back after these messages. See you guys soon.